Hello, big team. Hello, friends. Welcome to Lizzie Fay Loves Books. I'm Elizabeth. I'm going to stay behind the camera today and try to get this done as quick as I can. This is going to be my booktube spin list round three. So just to give you a little preface, I almost never film ahead, but I have right now probably four, maybe even five videos already filmed, ready to go, and I'm not going to upload any of those today because Rick McDonnell announced booktube spin round three a month early and i'm okay with that because i love the booktube spin so i am going to do an all new list this time i'm pretty sure that i have selected all different books actually i see one exception right now um but that's okay one can one more one carryover from the last two lists is fine um so I am actually going to do two lists because I came in here in my living room. This is kind of my miscellaneous shelf where there actually are a couple of mysteries, but I don't know if they're cozy. I mean, I've got like two shelves of cozy mysteries, and then I've got all my women's fiction in another room, middle grade, um, you know, all the different categories and genres that I generally collect and read. And these, for the most part, don't really fit in any of those categories. So I have this shelf in my living room. Above it are my Miss Reed books and books by Effie Leland Wilder there in the middle. And uh, some Larry McMurtry books down there and some scrapbooks. And then my husband's stuff is below that. So I have not read any of the books on this shelf except one. And so I'm not going to put it in my list of 20, but I have enough books here between this shelf and this one that I can come up with a pretty good list of 20. So that's what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to have another list of women's fiction because I looked at these and I feel like several of these are a little on the darker, heavier side. I mean, not all of them, but some of them. And I'm really in the mood for something a little lighter, something with, you know, colorful and bright. So I'm going to go to my women's fiction shelf after this. And I have a list of 20 from there. And then we will have, I'll end up with two books when this is all said and done. All right, I'm going to try to show you these and not shake the camera too terribly much. And I will make an attempt to show you the covers. The first one, Summer Hours at the Robbers Library by Sue Halpern. I featured that in my six book summer challenge that I, uh, video that I did not too long ago. This one is the one I think might have been on one and maybe both of the other lists. Maybe I'll just make it a thing to always carry at least one book over from a previous list. This is Pigtopia by Kitty Fitzgerald. I've been needing to read this, wanting to read it for a long time. I started it once and, um, didn't have time to finish it, so need to get to it. The next three are Mysteries. This one my sister sent me, A River to Die For by Nadine Trees Naring. I think this one might be a Christian-based mystery. And so that's number three. Number four, The Devil's Making by Sean Haldane. And someone gave me that one. I don't know anything about it. This one is a mystery in and of itself. A title to murder, The Car Hinge Mystery, a Western story by James C. Work. Now, I found this at a library book sale, and I came home and looked it up, and I, it, there's little to no information about it or this author. No one's reviewed it, at least the last time I checked. No one else has read it, but it was in a library's collection. And my husband and I have been to Carhenge. It's in Nebraska. It's basically Stonehenge made of cars. It's a pretty cool place. And uh, we just happened to be driving through Nebraska several years ago. And my husband saw the sign and pulled the car over and said, we got to stop here. So it was really an interesting experience. And apparently someone wrote a book set there. So um, I need to read that. This one I grabbed at a, probably a library sale because I am from Oklahoma and I'm very familiar with Route 66, at least portions of it. And this is The Boy, Oki Passage on Route 66, or some people say Route 66. Uh, this one apparently is set in Missouri or maybe between Missouri and Oklahoma. I don't know. Anyway, it's by J.L. Smith, and that looked interesting. So this is a series. There's actually four or five in this series. So I'm just putting... The first one on my list, it's called Bath Pond by Lowell Teal. This won an award in Florida. Uh, that's an award from the Florida Publishers Association. And I've never read this author, but I love the cover of this book. I first saw it in my local library, and I just never got around to reading it, and then eventually found my own copy at the Orlando Public Library in their 
bookstore. So uh, I found that one and two more. I think there's at least one and maybe two other books in the series. So this just really attracted me because the picture there of the couple in the orange grove remind me so much of a photo that we have of my husband's great-grandparents when they first visited Florida, they took a picture in an orange grove, and we still have that picture. They were from Canada. They came here on a visit and decided they wanted to live here. So they went back to Canada, loaded up all their kids. I think I had like nine kids and uh, got them all vaccinated, got on the train and moved to Florida. And the rest is history. So um, it's just um, it's a beautiful picture and I hope that the story is just as good as the as the picture and I love the oranges on the cover on the spine. All right, the next one's also a Florida book, Canaveral Light by Don David Argo. I think my husband's read that, but I haven't. Uh here's another one that my husband's read and I haven't. Uh, I picked this up at a library sale a long time ago because it has something to do with um someone's child having some kind of a mental disorder or something. I don't know. 72 hour hold by B.B. Moore Campbell. My husband read it and he said, I don't know if you'll like it. And I said, well, I'll, you know, I'll make my own opinion. And I never have gotten around to reading it. And then this one is a, obviously a civil war book, the widow of the South by Robert Hicks. I've just finished reading two different civil war books. So I don't know if I'm in the mood for that one. Although the ones I read were fantastic. This one, I can't remember where I got this. Maybe at the dollar store. Best Boy by Eli Gottlieb. Don't know what that's about. And again, here's one I don't know anything about, but I like the cover. It's called Rush Home Road by Lori Lansons. This one I got because I recognize the author's name. It's by Madeline Lingle, but I think this is an adult book. Sorry, A Live Coal in the Sea. I don't know anything about it other than I recognize the author. Um, this one I got at our Christmas uh, Library Book Club White Elephant Book Exchange that we do every year at Christmas time. And um, I was excited to get this, Rules of Civility by Amor Tolls, because I have read Gentleman in Moscow and loved it. So I'm excited about that. And then No Book But the World by Leah Hager Cohen. I don't know about this one either. I saw this at Dollar General once and um, just thought it was beautiful and I wanted to go ahead and pick it up. All right, so I've already read this book by Billy Letts, Made in the USA. Billy Letts was an author from my hometown area and I have read three of her four books. This is one of them, Made in the USA. You're probably most familiar with uh, Where the Heart Is. And then I've not read Shoot the Moon. In fact, I just got this book. Um, I don't even know if I've shown it in a haul yet, but I brought it in here because I would be interested in reading this one. And then I've got a book by Frederick Backman here. I haven't really collected his books, but this one I picked up somewhere. My grandmother asked me to tell you she's sorry, and I think I can get this on audio from my library if it gets picked, and then I probably won't have to keep the physical copy. So let's see. What order did I do those in? We've got, this is not 20, I know. I think this is about 17. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Oh, sorry, 16, 17. Okay, so for 18, 19, and 20, I'm going to pick three Larry McMurtry books that I've got here. I've already read all of the um, Lonesome Dove books. I used to have a copy of Lonesome Dove. I loaned it out, and uh, I'm, I, it got destroyed, so I won't be getting it back, but at some point, if I ever find one, I will get it. Uh, this is part of a series. This one I've read, and so I'm going to pick these three because that one's part of a series, and I don't have the first one. So for book 18, Walter Benjamin at the Dairy Queen, Reflections at 60 and Beyond. So I'm not quite 60. I'm 50. Am I 56 or 57? <laughs> I don't even know. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, I will turn 60 in uh, 2024, in November of 2024. So I, I can read that. It'll be fine. And then anything for Billy is by Billy, uh, is about Billy the Kid. And Buffalo Girls is about Calamity Jane. And so that makes 20. 
All right, so that is my first list of 20, and now I will go to my utility room, to my women's fiction shelf, where the colors are a little brighter, and uh, maybe find something colorful and a little more summery looking to read um, from that list. Okay, so I'm in my utility room in one of the um, large industrial shelving units, and the top shelf here is predominantly women's fiction. I've got a little bit of overflow on the top. Uh, what's below it, you've seen kind of recently. It's middle grade and fantasy and all of that. So we're going to focus on this shelf, namely these two stacks and then a few more over there. And I'm going to do this, um, this list or this stack, if you will, a little bit differently because I have several books by like multiple books by a few authors and so rather than stretch those out and make those my 20 I'm going to just use some of the like the authors that I have multiple books by they're going to represent each one number so that if one of their numbers gets picked then I still get to choose which book by them that I'm going to read. And I will probably do that randomly as well. So I've got a few books by Cecilia Ahern. I've got two of them here and there's some more in the back. So anything I have by her that I haven't read will be fair game if number one gets picked. Uh, I think I only have three books left by Kate Morton that I haven't read. I have read two more that I took off the shelf so they wouldn't confuse things. A House at Riverton and Forgotten Garden I've already read. And I apologize that the camera's kind of shaky. It's because I'm trying to hold it and do this at the same time. I read a few books by Lorna Landvik. These four I have not read. Oh My Stars, Angry Housewives, The Tall Pine Polka, and Welcome to the Great Mysterious. So any of those are fair game, and I guess I should have given you the titles of the Kate Morton books. Secret Keeper, Distant Hours, and The Lake House. And then um, P.S. I Love You, A Place Called Home by Cecilia Ahern, and I know I've got at least one or two more in the back that I can't recall. I think uh, Rosie Dunn is one of them. And um, anyway, we'll have to let it go at that. If that, if number one gets picked again, which, you know, what are the odds of that? Then I'll have to dig them out. Okay, let's start at the bottom and go up. I've got a bunch of books by Elizabeth Berg. She used to be one of my most collected unread authors. And I have since read at least two. I think, yeah, I've read two of her books. All of these from here down, I have not read. Say When, Range of Motion, Home Safe, The Last Time I Saw You, Once Upon a Time There Was You, The Pull of the Moon, Tapestry of Fortunes, Range of Motion. Oh, I think I have two of those. Um, we are all welcome here. So any of those, those are all go in a hat. If a number four is chosen, then I could read any of those Elizabeth Berg books. Okay, then we've got Around the Bend by Shirley Jump. I actually... Hmm, I want to show you these covers, but I'm going to have to pull them off from the top, so I'm going to be out of order. So, will that make sense? <laughs> so, this is number four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So, book eleven, the first annual Grand Prairie Rabbit Festival. That is an awesome cover. This one looks so delicious. The Irresistible Blueberry Bake Shop and Cafe by Mary Simses. This one just has a fantastic title. The Most Famous Illegal Goose Creek Parade by Virginia Smith. I think that one's a Christian book. It should really go on my Christian fiction shelf, but I wanted to include it in this list. The One Way Bridge by Kathy Pelletier. And then Page Out of Life by Kathleen Reed. I think this is a scrapbooking story. The Keeper of Lost Things by... Ruth Hogan. Um, I think this has been a popular book. I've seen it around. Pretty sure the audio is on Scribd. This one I picked up because, hello, pig on the cover, Around the Bend by Shirley Jump. Now, I have read one or two of her romances, and she gets kind of steamy. I don't know if I'm going to like that or not, but who can resist a pig on the cover? So we've got four, five, so that's number six, Range of Motion, number seven, Page Out of Life, number eight, the One Way Bridge. Sorry, I'm really getting shaky now. The Most Famous Illegal Goose Creek Parade. And then... See, I've already lost track, but that's okay. Here's a Swole Blueberry Bake Shop. And First Annual Grand Prairie Rabbit Festival. Okay, so now we're going to go down here. We're going to skip these four because I don't want to read those right now. And we'll start here, and this should finish out our 20. Friendship Cake by Lynn Hinton is the first book in... Mm, it's a series. Hope something. 
can't remember what. The Floribama Ladies Auxiliary and Sewing Circle by Lois Battle. I've had this on my shelf forever. I don't know anything about it. The uh, This one is Self Storage by Gail. Is it Brandeis or Brandies? I love that cover too. I'm drawn to very domestic looking covers. The Knitting Circle by Ann Hood. And I'm also drawn to fun, silly covers. Moon Pies and Movie Stars by Amy Wallen. That looks fun. Faith Bass Darling's Last Garage Sale by Linda Rutledge. That Camden Summer by Laverell Spencer. This one I featured in my six book summer challenge video and Instagram post. When in Doubt, Add Butter by Beth Harbison. And the last one is the first one in this trilogy. It's a knitting trilogy by Gil McNeil. The Beach Street Knitting Society and Yarn Club. So that should make 20. And um, like I said, some of them are author groups. And if any of numbers one through four gets chosen, then I'll get to choose one from the appropriate author to read for the BookTube Spin. So this is my BookTube Spin times two round three and i hope you enjoyed this video thank you so much for watching i hope you're having a great day read a good book and god bless you